Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 1996 animated sports comedy film Space Jam starring Michael Jordan, Wayne Knight, I think is his name. He's in this. Uh, he plays Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park. Um, Danny DeVito plays Mr. Wack. What's his name? Swack? Swackhammer, uh, who's the leader of the Nerdlux, who are an alien race, a cartoon alien race. Mr. Swackhammer owns an amusement park named Moron Mountain, and Moron Mountain is run by Mr. Swackhammer as well as the Nerdlux. And business is bad, so they try to figure out a way to get business back. And they flip through the inter channels of the universe of TV and come across Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes are on Earth, so the Nerdlux are sent to Earth into Looney Tune land to uh, capture the Looney Tune characters. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and Elmer Fudd and uh, Sylvester and Tweety and all, all, all the Warner Brothers gang, um, Porky Pig, and there's a Lola Bunny involved as well. <clears throat> so they're attempted to be kidnapped, uh, to, to be enslaved, to be the entertainment for Moron Mountain, led by Mr. Swackhammer. Um, and the nerd looks are kind of like hoodwinked into uh, agreeing to playing a basketball game, which will dictate whether the Looney Tune characters will go to Moron Mountain or not. But they're tiny and they're puny and like the game is in a week, so there's no way in hell that they'll be ready. So the Nerdlux go to the mortal world of Earth steal all of the NBA characters' uh, talents. Um, and so Bugs Bunny and crew kidnap Michael Jordan to uh, train them to make sure that they can beat the Monstars, as the Nerdlux are now called, because the Nerdlux were fused with these NBA players' uh, talent to then be gigantic monsters and obviously the looney tunes are not going to be ready nor can they defeat the monsters um without some kind of training and luck so they get michael jordan to be their coach and it's this whole back and forth will they be enslaved won't they be enslaved and then eventually michael jordan and you know the tunes win their basketball game and you know all is right with the world the nerd lux give the monsters turned back into the nerd looks by giving Michael Jordan a basketball with the talent of the NBA players. Michael brings the ball back to the NBA players and he says, listen, you got to trust me. I know it's weird, but you got to trust me. You got to hold the ball and you'll get your powers back. And they hold the ball to get their powers back. Everybody loves happily ever after. So we think. So this came out in 96. It's pure 90s nostalgia for every millennial. I was six years old when this came out. Uh, my brother was four when this came out. We had friends in elementary school literally get picked up from school early to go see this movie when it came out. I shit you not. There was a whole big thing with the toys at McDonald's. Everybody needed the toys at McDonald's. Like this was a huge thing in 96. This was massive. And then a few years later, everyone was obsessed with Pokemon. 98 with the Pokemon cards. Whew, we were going crazy. So the 90s nostalgia for us uh, millennials are, is quite profound. That's why Space Jam 2 and New Legacy is I'm holding to a very high standard just because I hold this to a very high standard. I love this movie. I love the soundtrack. I love the aesthetics of it. The way of introducing the 2D to the actual you know, human characters is very on par to how uh, the Disney company has done their stuff in the past. Uh, it's just such a great nostalgic film, and, and the Space Jam song is just iconic for the 90s, and it's iconic for basketball. The only reason a lot of millennials like basketball is because of Space Jam, so I think it's hysterical. Um, I have a lot of fond memories with this. I have I have a weird memory with this, actually. I, I was friends with this kid once. His name's Adam, and um, he invited me over to his house to watch Space Jam. This was We were like, I was, what, 20? He was 18 or something like that, so it's like... We're, we're not, like, four. So he invited me over, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, first time I'm at Adam's house, awesome. We always hang out at my house. You know, we'll watch a movie at his house. And he invites me in, but, like, his house was, like, I don't know, like, the main house part was, like, up. And, like, his room was to the left. As soon as you walked in, his room was to the left. And as soon as, like, he opened the door, he, like, ushered me into his room. He didn't want me to meet his family. He didn't want me to go upstairs, like nothing like i couldn't use the bathroom it was so strange it was so strange so we watched the movie super quick i left super quick didn't talk to him after that it was just so weird because it's a great movie and now i have this weird memory attached to it um i don't know i don't know man i don't know what happened with that um i knew this girl once she had um one of the one of the nerd Lux, uh tattooed on her um 
Worlds, and that was a pretty cool tattoo. Like, it's it's I have a I have a glass with the Space Jam logo and the characters on it. It's it's just pure nostalgia. So I'm very excited for uh, for this particular sequel coming up. But um, yeah, I'm curious, what is your nostalgic memories with Space Jam? It's not a perfect film, but it's a perfect film for the millennial group because we grew up with it. Because we all went in insane at McDonald's getting these toys and we went insane with buying the cassette to blast constantly in our mom's cars and we went insane with having to watch it over and over and over again we needed the t-shirts we needed the sneakers we needed the everything merchandise I will never forget it it was iconic and it will always be iconic and that's why the sequel better be iconic we'll see I'm nervous <laughs>